Hello, welcome to stream number 83 in this series where I'm programming an NES game live on Twitch from scratch. Good evening, uh, MDTA UK. Hello. Um, this is a late start to the stream, so this is going to be pretty short, I think. Um, I, uh, I'm already pretty tired, and uh, I'm just going to kind of plug away here and try and get some more stuff done. One of the things that uh, I talked about in previous uh, in the previous stream and and also in uh, in some of uh, yeah some of the other streams was I believe transparency and how we determine what the uh, background color is. Um, So what I want to do is I want to make use of the transparent color on indexed PNGs here to uh, see if we can determine what the background color is so we don't include it in our palette that we generate so that we get that resolved in our, in our uh, player uh, sprite actually has the correct color for the cockpit um, I've been talking with uh, Jordan who is the artist um, for this game and we've had got some really cool ideas coming down the line um, on how this game is going to play and look which is exciting oh you know there's one other thing that I thought of let's see if, if I change this real quick if if this does what I think it's going to do, but um, one of the things that we had worked on was the way we were updating attributes, and part of the reason that that was changed was because we uh, have this split screen that we were using at one point, and we're doing the horizontal mirroring. Um, I'm sorry, the vertical mirroring. But I'm wondering if we change to horizontal mirroring and get rid of this part. If we'd get rid of that artifact that we we see at the bottom when we uh, when we scroll, it's one of those things that it's kind of simple if that works. Um, but I didn't think of it at the time because I was so focused on just fixing the attribute problem. Um, so let's take a look. There is. So for MMC3, we are writing the mirroring um, to register A000. Right now we're writing the value 0, which I believe is just setting it to do the vertical mirroring. And what we need to do is we need to change it to horizontal. So where so at a zero we just want to write one instead. Let's see that that's gonna have I know that that's gonna update some stuff incorrectly on the other uh, name table area, but that's that's okay. I want to see what this looks like here in terms of once we get started on the scrolling and we move forward because you'll notice we're updating the attributes but we're not seeing any changes here but I I don't know if that's because there's nothing that's using attributes yet I don't think that's the case I think it's actually going to be a smooth transition um, there's some Oh, you know what? Okay. It's not quite that simple. All right, I'll put it back, but I think that's going to actually work and make the scrolling better because what will happen is we'll be updating things that are off screen and, uh, and, and won't be at the bottom because of the wrap in the way the mirroring is working. But right now when, when we update the, the name tables, we're doing it, uh, for the wrong kind of mirroring. So I thought it might be as simple as just changing that but I got to change where I'm writing the name tables 
Uh, you need to change what name tables written. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not updating that uh, the, those name tables properly. Um, so that's all that is. I, I hadn't thought about that, but hey, Bonchiku. So yeah, so, but I think it'll work, and that'll that'll smooth that out a little bit. Um, so anyway, going back to what I was talking about before. If we load up a sprite here and we go back to the player ship. So right now we have a background color, but in theory uh, we should be able to should be able to get a transparent color. So let's do this. So let's close that. Let's reopen those test sprites that Jordan gave us here. And let's grab this one and then create a new one that's 16 by 16. Um, with index and transparent, and we'll look at why that matters in a moment. I think, nope, positioning's no good there. Now the other problem is that it pasted it with the, the wrong palette. Let's uh, switch over to the NES palette, please. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. No, that, that is right now. Although, it's supposed to be transparent. I don't see... Did I not create that right? Background transparent. Indexed 16 by 16. And then... that is it just because it's so small and the color is shared between all palettes yeah, no, I, I understand how the transparency works um, on the NES, but as far as the the PNG goes, um, what I want to do is I want to um, I want to use the background color. Oh, I see. I want the background color that we're using to be a um, transparent color. So that when we go to load, when we go to load it, it will um, will be able to detect which color is fully transparent and ignore it from the palettes that we're uh, pulling in from the JPEG, uh, from the PNG rather. Um, I just don't. I don't know why it's not using that checkerboard pattern here. Get out of here. I don't know if that's because it's indexed. Let me try. I just want to make sure that it's actually legitimately giving me a transparent background. Oh, okay, it is. It's just the way... That's funny. It's just the way that it's scaling the... Um, the background for the transparency, that's what it was. Okay, um, that's no problem then. So let me zoom in here so I can actually see. Does the NES not take the first color from the palette? It, it does, but the asset tool where it's converting the PNG doesn't under, it doesn't just use the first color um, because that may not be correct, uh, depending on how the graphics tool saves it out. So what I want to do is have a guaranteed way of knowing what the 
background color is and transparent is a pretty um, consistent way of knowing. So that'll be our that'll be sort of our key. Rather than selecting like a, a specific RGB color or something like that, that'll be our key for knowing um, what color to ignore because it's the transparent one. So um, and then it also means I don't have to force the colors. So we're using, you know, four colors or eight colors in this case. I don't want to have to have it so that the palette forces the um, those colors into the first four or eight or 16 positions. Um, I, I just want the asset tool to understand how to do it automatically. All right, so if I grab this, there's our transparent color. And what you can see, or our transparent um, chunk. So uh, short version, PNG consists of chunks of data. The first part of it is four characters that tell you what kind of chunk it is. Um, the next four are the size of the chunk. Um, and you can see that in this case it is um, third, uh, what ending this am I using? Binary mode, switch to big endian. It's big endian mode, uh, I believe. No, that wouldn't be right because then it's saying 390 bytes and it's definitely not 300. So is it little endian? Oh, is that the size? Yeah, that's the size. So what is the value here? It should just be 13. Uh, oh, it's 16. Um, value, okay, but it is, it is big endian. Oh, Windows, why are you constantly interrupting me with warnings that you're going to restart? We'll restart finishing. Just tell us to pick a time. Here, 1 a.m. Go nuts. I don't know why this has to be a thing. Great, go away. Um, so it's big Indian mode for the binary, uh, which is what I was changing. Here we go. All right, so the value is 16. So we've got those four bytes for the size and then we've got our 16 bytes of data. And then the last four bytes are a CRC. Um, before we get to the next chunk. So that's a CRC of the section and then we've got this is the palette and it's got um, What size of the palette? Oh, did I not resave this? No, it saved as indexed. But anyway, regardless, the, the so oh this you know what it is. I'm sorry. The size precedes the header uh, name. Um, that's where I was getting confused. So it's 13 bytes, and then the, it, the this is the header. For example, the header of the chunk, and then we have our 13 bytes of data, and then we have a CRC check of the data. And then we have our next size, which is in this case 168 bytes. And then this is the palette chunk. So anyway, so here we are, we're at the transparency one, which is TRNS. And that is 56 bytes. So it is almost all the colors um, Um, all right, so then we have our chunk name and then we have the alpha channels. And so let's see, so this is, what did I say? This is, uh, this is 56 bytes. So 
we've got our four bytes here, and then we've got 56 bytes. So those are our palette values, and really all we care about is finding which one of these is zero. Um, it's zero to 255, where 255 is completely opaque and zero is completely transparent. And then this is our CRC before the next chunk. So we're using Tiger, this uh, image library, to load our uh, PNGs. But unfortunately, it doesn't know anything about transparency. So what we have to do is we have to use this, um, we have to modify this to update it to understand the uh, the transparent color. The spray palettes are basically very colored and transparent. And it's right, the max of seven colors. All right, so. Uh, it's TRNS. Let's see what we've got here. What is the min length zero? All right, so what does this actually return? Just a pointer, unsigned character. What does he define them all up here? Yeah, all right, so. Is that right? Yep. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say trans is that if uh, transparency is not equal to null, we'll, we'll process it, but let's, let's start there. Um, let me open up the command line. To JSON player dot sprite too many S's. All right, so if we go back to this, our player definition should have been updated. I don't have that open. Where are my recent files? All right, so it was updated with the palette files and the width and height and the collision point and all that. So that's good. Um, because I want to reprocess the um, the PNG and make sure we actually get the transparency chunk here properly before we start implementing this, just in case. Um, so then I want to take PNG to sprite and player dot PNG, and um, we're going to also pass in that player.json as the initial or as our sort of guiding uh, metadata about the thing. All right, so let's run this and see what we get. So it didn't, actually, so did it not build it or did it not find it output? Um, I don't know. It should be building it. All right. Um, I don't know why it skipped over that, but. All right, so find. So didn't find it. Let me just double check that I didn't do something silly. Um, there's a player, PNG. Uh, detail. Uh, 
modified today, 10 minutes ago. Okay. Let's reopen this and make sure. All right, it's got it there. T R N S. Um. I'm surprised that that didn't work, but maybe it's just something I don't understand about the way this works. So let's see. So from the PNG, oh, does it have to be in order? Well, but then. That wouldn't make much sense. Why? Mem compare chunk start plus four. Get 32. So it's just iterating chunks. It may have already passed it. I wonder if that's the problem is that it has to be in order, which would kind of Dink, but that's not the end of the world. Let's see here. All right, so header palette. Where's IDAT? IDAT is at the bottom, so transparent. Where did I have that? I had it after the IDAT. So but that is. Oh, 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 okay. I've got to reset the position. That's why P and G P is equal to first. That's why I have to make sure we're searching from the beginning. Otherwise, it's not going to find it's not going to find the uh, the chunk in the file. Still didn't find it. Oh, did, okay, it did find it. it. Oh, that's what it is. Is the compiler knows we're not actually doing anything, so it doesn't bother hitting that breakpoint. Um, okay, well that's good. So it found that now. So basically, at that point, what we want to do is we just want to iterate through our. Want to iterate through the. the colors or the palette and then determine which one is the one that's transparent. I mean, I guess you could theoretically have a few different transparent colors in the palette, but I, we're not going to worry about that edge case. Um, the other thing we probably need to do is update this right now. This has no understanding. Uh, and we'll fix that. So unsigned uh, char transparent index. Mm. I'm gonna actually make it just this um, negative one if no transparency otherwise contains transparent color index. Or indexed PNG only. Um, I don't want to. I'm not trying to solve every problem here as far as um, PNG transparency goes. I'm just trying to solve specifically the one we're going to use for the way we're generating the assets. So um let's see uh i will know if it's indexed based on if the bpp is one and c type is three if c type is three so okay um if c type is equal to three let me bother with this if it's indexed PNG and we will say uh, 
update map equals negative one. All right, so we found the thing and then we're gonna do the same kind of thing he did in the way he wrote this where he gets the size by doing the pointer minus eight and then we don't actually need to do anything other than a loop, right? We say int i is equal to i is less than length. And as soon as we hit the transparent color, we're gonna break out of this loop. So if uh, the only thing we gotta do is, let's do transparent plus equals four to skip the header. actually an identifier I guess right what is it called what does he call it in here where's my spec Did I close it okay let's do that so if um, trans I equals zero then bitmap transparent index is equal to i and then we break and we're done so that gives us our transparent color that we can then use to determine if we ignore it when we're calculating our uh, used palette for the png all right so i don't about that so much well what is what is the length it gets it should be 56 it is good um, and then the palette in the index should just be zero I believe negative one why if transparent I equals zero oh you know what it is uh, I wonder Take a look at this for a second here. I wonder if it's yeah. Uh, okay, so that is we gotta. It's annoying uh, because it's a pointer. It doesn't know which of the bytes we're actually interested in. So let's do OX zero 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 zero. 00FF to mask out any of the byte, uh, bytes we don't care about. All right, so we should get into there now. No? Turn and Bitwise and zero zero. Oh, sorry. And then shift it down twenty four. Right. There we go. So it's because of the byte ordering. If you look at transparent I, no, just transparent rather. Well, transparent I, we want the address of that, right? And what we have here is, uh, actually that's right. No, is that right? I is zero, transparent I is 255. Uh, did I just mess up my pointer math? It's weird. It should be just pretty straightforward, right? It should be, I'm at this position, unless it modified something else here. Let me restart. Uh, get index trend, okay. So, 
Oh, why? Oh, okay, because it's already at the start of the data, so I don't need to do the plus four. All right. That seems weird. I've had problems in the past where when you, you're using a pointer and you're casting it down to something that's a smaller number of bytes, it, it will, um, you know, from like a 32 to a 16 or something like that, you, you get the wrong result because it's taking into account too many of the um, too many of the bytes in the in what the pointer dereferences, but the, it didn't seem like it needed to do that. It was just um, a, a mistake on my part because I didn't realize that this pointed to uh, it pointed to the beginning of the data already. So that's all all it is. All right, so let's rerun that. All right, so I is zero, and then we break, and we have our transparent index, which is zero, which is good. So now what has to happen is, when we go through the process of loading the image palette, Right here, we're iterating through to compose a palette that actually makes sense out of the tiles that we're using. And the one thing that we didn't take into account before was that the background color is um, completely unnecessary. Um, and it was because we really didn't have a good way of designating it other than saying, okay, well, index zero is always that or something, something along those lines, um, which I wasn't really happy about. But this way, it won't matter as long as the color isn't the transparent color, it'll count. And if it's transparent, that, then we will ignore it. So what we are doing here is what we need to change. So right now we're saying this, which is fine, but we have to say if this is equal to image transparent index, then continue. So don't bother taking into account that particular color. Now, going back to this for a second, that means that we can, we can keep this JSON file as is. Um, what I want to do is I want to remove the player palette files. Which are just those four byte files. These are totally, that's not useful anymore. And then I'm going to change this to not call with the JSON file just for the sake of it regenerating the palette and what we should get is a palette that actually now has all the colors of player of the player sprite correctly um, defined and so let's see so player.pal player zero.pal yeah there it is so let's load up the sprite now in fact we can just do that from here Oh, um, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, sorry, I forgot that that one little hiccup. So now we've got to re-export it with the appropriate palettes in use. Um, do, do, do. And that should... That should work. Interesting. So, is there something in what a sprite exported? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it because we indexed the thing already? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we we okay. So this is actually the wrong 
the wrong place to do it. Um, hmm. That's an interesting development here. Uh, transparent index. So this is the wrong spot. I don't want to do it here. I want to do it. So here we're figuring out the closest matches of those colors to the NES colors and re indexing, but what we're not doing, uh, crap, wait a minute. So let's look at this for a second. So this is turning into M set indexed, indexed is that. So what's happening here is we're taking the image data and loading it and then it's taking the index data and turning it into non-index data, but I believe okay, and then raw is raw is this. So we do have this. So when we go, all right, Sorry, I'm just backtracking here because I forgot how, how that was handling the process of going from the palleted to uh, RG, RGB. Um, hey, Eugene. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to be too late. I, I, um, I'm trying not to go too long. It's just it's um, I got a late start. So um, it's one of those things where... It's one of those things where it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Uh, so that actually raises the question. So what's happening now is that I'm ignoring the fact that it was indexed and then converting the RGB value. Not that there's anything particularly wrong with that per se. I mean, it's not great, obviously, but I'm turning the RGB value into back into an indexed value based on the NES index. Oh, I'm I'm moving around now. As let me know if it's uh, if it's any better. But it should be. The stream says it's excellent, but I don't know. It's hard to tell with these sometimes. I am thinking pretty hard. <laughs> uh, all right, so the problem. Is now we have the transparent indexed color, but we don't have. I'm doing a bunch of conversions. Let me think about this. So you import the indexed PNG, collect the colors, find the transparent color, and then generate palettes to be exported and included. Uh, so yeah, let me let me think about this problem for a second. MD, uh, MDA to, MDTA UK, and I will re-explain this, but um, the indexed image is what tells us it's so I almost what I think I wanted. So 
So what we need to do then is determine So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose like 3F as our sort of default what we would consider background color. And then through this process, right now what we're doing is we're, we're iterating over the entire image and taking the RGB value and getting the closest NES value based on the NES palette that we're using in here and then um, re-indexing re it based on that. Now, uh, the problem is then we don't have the same indexes uh, that we were uh, using in the original PNG. So, what we need to do is before we destroy this, um, let's uh, let's keep this around for a little bit longer. Oh. So we're gonna we're gonna actually allocate it to new and next this is going to go away at the end and we're going to populate index based on this new buffer with our matched index. But before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say if image indexed um, i is equal to image transparent index, um, was this the transparent color? Actually, we can even do it before we even bother calculating anything. We just basically say, okay, was this a transparent color? And if it was, then we say image indexed i is equal to, what did I say? 3f. And then return. And then here we're going to set up our matched index and stuff like that. And all we need to do is just make sure we don't use 3F, um, which is the last color. So we'll make it 63. Um, are you guys able to see the stream okay? I didn't see an update to the chat saying that it's good or bad. 3F is okay, I think. I think it's just 0D is the one that you're supposed to arrange, uh, avoid, rather. Let's let's double check that. I mean, it's going to be a transparent color anyway, so um, it's going to get changed based on what the background needs. Um, but let's double check that before, before I decide on that 100%. Um, 3F. Uh, you know, let's do zero D should not be used. I don't see one D is black. Three F is this guy here. So we don't want this one, obviously, but, um, so what we can do is, um, We can even say if j is equal to um, just make it uh, something else, 0e.
right? So we don't use that one. All right, so that'll give us, right, I know that's still open. Okay, so that'll give us our 3F that we can now safely assume is our background color um, because we have forced it to work that way. And then when we go to load the image palette, um, now all we need to do is say, okay, if uh, equals 3F, then continue. So don't even bother putting that into the color map. Um, so as far as the um, as far as the background color, the problem is that like the background color on a flat non-layered sprite is is just another pixel, right? We just have to. Uh, we, we have to have some way, I want to have some way of guaranteeing that we know what the background is without it being something that we have to make um, an assumption that can change or, or whatnot. So by forcing it to be the transparent uh, pixel color, then we, we can guarantee that it's okay. Um, so what we have to, what the process is, is if you are regenerating a sprite with some new palettes, what you do would normally do is you would say, you want to do PNG to sprite. Now for the first time you do PNG to sprite like this, where it has a palette that it has palettes that it generates. So it's in this case, generating two palettes based on the colors that are in use in, uh, in the tiles. Now, what we talked about in previous streams is that there's actually um, two sets of palettes because although the grays are shared, the um, the blue and the red kind of push us over that color limit of the four in one palette. So we needed to have a way of differentiating this. So by doing what we just did there, now we've generated the sprite structure with the new palettes and then the JSON file has additional data that we need like the bounding box and collision points and stuff like that. It's just a way of um, being able to store that off independent of the sprite file if we want to regenerate the sprite file with new assets. Um, so png to sprite and then player.json so that should look right, maybe. Um, okay, so it's different. It's, hmm. Not sure what happened there. I don't know where this pink came from. So for each tile, it's iterating through and it's looking to see if the indexed image is using 3F. And if it is, I wonder if it's actually ever getting to that. So the transparent index is zero. That's that part we, we know is working okay. So let's see. Yeah, that's finding that okay. So it's not adding that to the color map. And then, f and then it composes the palette based on what the color map has in it. So color map had all right, color count, palette destination. Let's take a look at this here. So we have 
the non-used color, 0, 7, so 0 and 7 and 35. I don't know. I don't know where 35 is coming from unless there's something wrong about the way it's loading the indexed image. Is that possible that it's just drawing the indexed image incorrectly? Yes, I'm taking the RGB value and translating it to the closest uh, NES asset value. Um, and that was working fine before, but that was when I was using just the straight up RGB value. I wonder if it doesn't like, I wonder if the indexed color it's saving it as is off for some reason. And so the nearest one it finds is that pink, but that that's weird. It's weird that it would do that. Um, no, it's, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it, it is strange. Um, Thirty-five. What colors did it find when it went through? Let's take a look at the color map here for a second. Um, and the RGB value that I'm using, I'm converting to YUV because based on what I was reading, YUV is a better color space to um, compare colors and um, get a sense of what colors are closer visually. Um, so, and again, that was working okay before, so I'm not sure why it's all of a sudden not. Is that too big? <laughs> it's too big. All right. Um, does it care? Will it care if I try it in hex? No. Um, well, let's go with uh, 81 as binary so far. So it's 1 and 2, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And um, So color zero. That's the indexed value. Oh, I wonder if the re-indexing process got messed up um, by By what I did here. Let me go back to this for a second. Match 
match index. Newman index picks is that. So it's choosing the one that's the closest and then D is equal to distance. Hmm, new index is the match index. Load image palette. Uh, why? Convert image to indexed. Why didn't it call? It's weird. Why didn't it break on that? It shouldn't be pushing any other color checking code, but I mean, it didn't care. Um, Tiger doesn't care about um, transparency in and of itself. Oh, why? Oh, uh, keep doing that. So that is the in, yeah, that's the transparent color. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That should go into new index. That's, that I think is what the problem is. That should go into new index, not into, because it's, Forcing it to, that was dumb. Okay, so what it was doing, it was updating, it was updating the indexed image with the color 3F, um, but that was not what actually gets passed in. So that was essentially being set to zero. It, uh, yeah, and that could have potentially caused problems. So let's see. Come on, where's the one that I already ran? The only other thing I'm, I can think of image index is equal to image transparent index, the new index is equal to 3F, which is our background color. Oh, damn it. No, continue. So that was a total bust. Okay, that was just wrong wrong thing. Uh, let's, let's see if that fixes it. It wasn't fully processing the PNG, it looks like, so that would that would potentially cause... All right, so that actually looks better. Now, again, the reason that the... So the, the asset tool, when it generates the palettes, it doesn't actually assign them to the tile, the tiles that it creates, um, partially because it, it knows that based on the sprite, we might take a PNG like this and turn it into three sprites instead of four to be a little bit uh, smarter about our uh, char-rom usage. So we've got one, two, and three, and this is palette one, and this is palette two, and that's palette two. So in the JSON, we can define that. So what we do is after we get our two palettes, we can then export the JSON, modify the palettes, and then we just keep exporting. Anytime we make a change, as long as it's not a fundamental change to the way that the sprite looks, we, we should just be able to keep re-exporting that um, with that JSON file. And there it is. And that looks exactly right now, finally. Um, and it should have the collision point, and it does. It's got its collision point there. We can even add in um, you know, we should probably add in our two additional collision points. So let's save that. Let's re-export. 
um, the JSON file. So now it's got our three collision points and we want to save that. And that's what we're going to reuse for um, every time we export this now. Um, so say like Jordan makes a little tweak to the way the bottom works. We don't need to rebuild the whole thing um, and redefine all these collision points. And every, we, this, is the, this is the data about the sprite. The sprite contains that plus the image data. The palettes are separate because what we want to do is we want to have the palettes be defined as part of um, the level metadata that will then be independent so we can load sprites and swap palettes as necessary um, without having to care about what the palettes were when we looked at the, the PNG. Um, all right, so now in theory, if I, let me see, that didn't, the rest of the stuff should be okay. What we can do now is let's export, let's re-export the whole um, project. Um, is that not the file? It is the file. Um, oh, I guess it doesn't like me being here. No? Okay. What did I break? Broke something else. Projects shooter uh, assets shooter.txt. the debugger live read what can't you read palette file what palette file are you looking for um, explode zero. Oh, is it relative here Jeez. Um, but that's weird because I was in that's what I get for using oh okay I bet you it's the Let's take a look at something here. So explode. Uh, that's weird. Did I leave that in a broken state in the last stream? It's possible. Um, let's fix that. PNG to sprite. Explode.png. That's fine. That's true. Well, actually, you know what? Let's um, let's leave that for a second. So explode should only. Does it have two pallets? It's possible it does abort. All right, well, you know what? I don't care about both of them. I'm just gonna worry about the one right now. I mean, in in, in the long term, I guess I care, but for the purposes of what we're doing right now, I don't. So it's animated, that becomes the background. Um, you know what we can even do, because this wasn't saved. This wasn't saved correctly. Because this was just something I found. Hopefully, eventually, uh, Jordan will 
give me a better one, but let's um, uh, get the NES palette up here. That didn't work the way I wanted to. Sprite color mode RGB. Let's flip over to the NES palette. Okay. Um, and then what we will do is we can even do this, right? I can create a new one. Oh, <laughs> I gotta invert the selection. And get my transparencies there. And um, that's close enough. Don't save that one. All right, so if I reprocess that, Interesting. So it looks like looks like because it's using two palettes. All right. So it's not terrible. I mean, what what we're seeing is that it's using two palettes, so it's kind of alternating. And what we would need to do is fix this part in the the JSON. And I don't really care about that right now. That's more of a procedural thing for the assets to get that to work. Uh, that control is not uh, behaving itself. Uh, earlier you had the cockpit blue color flashing. Uh, well, so it was flashing at one point because it was the same color as was being used for the uh, sort of like the afterburner um, or the thruster, as Jordan called it here. Um, so we will use a common palette for this and explosions, I believe. Um, I'm, I'm, if I'm remembering right, that's yeah. So the thruster, the enem enemy fire, um, the bullets themselves will also change. Um, to that common color and then uh, this way it's not going to be palette rotation it'll be probably an actual animation like this which looks pretty awesome um, we will do um, palette rotation for this for the enemy propulsion at least again you know based on sort of preliminary design work that Jordan's done. Uh, I like the way it looks, so I don't have anything against what he's saying there. Um, all right, so that that's fine. I'm just gonna make it animated and save, and then we're good there, at least as good as it's gonna be right now. Um, now I know why I messed with that, because it was kind of wrong, but that's okay. Um, so let's see now if I can export. Um, <laughs> so that's. Do I need to re export all of them because the paths in some are relative and others are not? Confused as to what issues it's having finding these files. Um, let's see, load sprite, load palette, palette, explode zero dot pal. Where? But I thought the JSON has, oh, it doesn't have a full path. So is that the issue? Like if I re-export that. It's 
its relative path, which is why it can't find it. Um, but I would have thought it would have found it based on where it is looking for it based on where the sprite is. Explode dot sprite. Load sprite. So what I can do is I can make the sprite maybe an option in the JSON and the two palettes listed. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the point of, of this is kind of to make it a repeatable process that once, once we have it figured out, the, it, any little tweaks or changes don't require me manually re-going re in and retouching the images. It becomes a process of you just, you know, drop the new PNG in and then you, you rebuild, right? And then the, the make file goes out and it regenerates the sprite files using the JSON file and then, you know, re-exports the whole map and then runs the assembly. Um, that's the idea anyway. Um, it may be that this overcomplicates it or doesn't do it right, but I don't know. Um, that's what I'm trying to figure out here. Um, all right, so what I wanna do is I want to get the parent path and we're gonna put that into here from Um, and then we're just gonna, I'm not sure I'm crazy that we're doing this, um, but probably that's the right way to get it to consistently open those files. There we go. So, Let's see, if I blow away this whole thing. All right, so it's not happy about something and it's crashing, it looks like. Um, all right, so that's, that's not, uh, that's not working, why? Why did it have the full path for the player, but not explode? I wonder, oh, you know what? I bet we can make it generate a full path if we put in the full path. If we then do that, let's take a look. Okay. All right, that's fine. I know about this problem with the JSON not being valid when there's a full path in there. That's that's not a that's not a huge deal. Um, it's obviously not right, but we'll fix that later. So okay, that's that's better. Um, so let me get rid of this then. We don't actually need this. I just got to remember. that we need to specify the full path. Okay, cool. And then we just got a whole bunch of stuff exported into that folder. We'll replace that and go to our assembly code and rebuild that and the colors are still gonna be wrong, but we should see a more consistent view of the sprites. And then I should be able to manually mess with the palettes to have it, oh, it's actually not too far off. Um, it just so happened that it loaded the palettes pretty close to what they're supposed to be, so. That's kind of cool. Um, where's the load of player sprites? Uh, what are the colors that are supposed to be? F zero, five. Let's just manually change it just for fun. Um, 
and see what that looks like. So zero five and one zero. Zero five, one zero, and uh, and then this is uh, 2D. Where are you, 2D? So let's see what that looks like in Is that not the palette that it's using? I guess not. Uh, what palette is that using? One, zero, two. Oh, I changed. Okay. Zero, five. Oh, that's pretty funny. So it's, again, I, I knew the colors weren't going to be right, but I, I thought since I, it looked like it was close, it, it might be worth trying to get it to work um, just by manually changing it. It's not that bad, though. It's really not. Like, we could... I don't think I can... Can I change that? No. But... That's that's pretty close, and let's just make sure that if I uh, if I do this, okay, so that didn't export properly as being animated. Oh, you know what? Because I re-exported it, and then never modified the sprite to be animated. That's why. Save. Let's re-export the whole thing. Uh, replace. Okay, and then Come on, messing. So the uh, animation should work properly now when I crash into this. Yeah. All right. So the colors are messed up, but that's okay. We, we knew, I knew that that was what was going to happen. So, and in fact, the other part that I hadn't considered was when I went and looked at the Right. It looks like looks like it's not using the background color. It's interesting. I'll have to look at why that is, but anyway, so that more or less figures that. Does the JSON need to specify which of the eight hardware palettes in the ROM? the palette should be loaded into, or does it populate in order? Um, it's specifying that the sprite that occurs at this position in the PNG uses this palette file um, for drawing purposes. Now, in the export process, what we need to do next is when we go to export the map, what it's doing is it's loading up the sprite definition and generating the draw code um, because that was the fastest way to get the code um, to draw the um, sprites to work, um, meaning it generates the code um, that actually populates the hardware and it's a, it's a pretty efficient way of doing it. And it's the only place I really want to do any sort of um, code generation. I, I've mentioned before, I don't generally like that. But so it's loading the X and Y position in this tile and the palette and the mirror. And right now, the palette, I think it's just using whatever the tile position is. Uh, let's look. It should be pretty straightforward so yeah so it's got the 
this is the palette and the mirror. So it's it's not doing anything with mirroring and the pa and the current palette is just set to whatever the tile is, which is why it's wrong. So what we would need to do is we would need to take There are a couple of things. What we need to do is we need to, for the, I don't know that I have the energy to do this right now. So what I had talked about earlier was now that we have that essentially working, what we need to do is have something like, you say palette player zero dot pal, palette player one dot pal, or maybe we could say this is sprite palette because there's also gonna be background palettes, right? And then we have, this one is enemy zero, and this is, um, we'll call it like, um, FX zero, right? So those are our four sprite palettes that we're gonna start with. And then uh, what needs to happen is that when we go through the process of reading that project file, we will take those palettes and generate the generate the information in the I guess the map data. I don't, I'm not even sure exactly where I want to do that. That says what palettes to load in what order, because we don't have that anywhere right now. We have the palettes defined. Um, if we go to sprite palettes. But right now we just iterate through everything that is a sprite, and we we iter we we um, we output the palette information about that sprite into a dot palette file that gets assembled into the code, uh, which isn't correct um, per se. So what we would need to do now is have a way of saying, okay, we've got these sprite palettes that we're generating binary for. Based on this, we want to load these right away. Um, right now, it's just, I think, loading literally the first four uh, sprite palettes, I want to say. In fact, actually, you know what? That would be kind of a... We could, we could trick it into working if we modify that. We could do some manual some manual stuff. Um, all right, so the first, actually the first problem is gonna be, the first problem is gonna be that pl the player palette is only going to be four bytes. So it doesn't even have the right number of bytes in the palette file. So yeah, so this is going to take a little bit more reworking to make this um, happen correctly. And again, it's going to go based on these um, based on these palette files, not these these the dot pal, not based on what we're doing here. Um, So, we're going to take a value. Let's see, MDTA, um, JSON. So, yeah, so the JSON doesn't need to specify the, the, the order and the hardware because it doesn't ca care about that. It's just drawn um, in the tool using the appropriate palette. Uh, we will transition the map over to knowing what palettes need to get loaded. And then by that, we have a map to correspond the sprite referenced palettes to the one that's loaded at the loading of the map here. And then that will give us what palette to use in this part of the draw code, uh, rather than just using the index of which sprite it is, uh, or whatever tile value. I don't even remember what I'm using. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then that will mean the palettes should work correctly. And then what we can do, like I was saying, is now that we have a consistent set of palettes where we have the enemy palettes, which consist, the enemies which consist of these palettes 
here, right? Um, and I believe this is potentially shared with the player. I'm gonna look. So, oh no, okay, the, the enemies only have the one, the one palette that's being used. The only thing we're gonna end up with is because, because we're not gonna have enough pallets for this plus the thrusters slash um, weapons fire. It's the enemy uh, blinking is gonna occur on the whole enemy, it looks like, um, which is probably fine. Uh, but going back to this, then what we can do is if we want to make changes to the way the enemy looks, for example, we can just change its palette. Or if we need to load up different enemies with different palettes, we know which ones we can replace um, deterministically rather than it getting swapped around because of the tool, reordering things incorrectly, and, and then that means that we can in tiled make intelligent decisions about, okay, I've got this spot in the map and I know that these new enemies are gonna come in here, so I need to add some sort of directive to the map that says um, which pallet to load. Hey, dataset James. Um, today we're working on wrapping up the pallet stuff, but um, yeah. Yeah, each, each wave could potentially replace the pallet, yeah. Um, although, who knows if that's going to actually happen. Some of that is still kind of up in the air. Um, again, you know, as far as NES stuff goes, I'm still figuring out how this will all look uh, and work exactly. Um, it's much easier when you are unrestricted. Um, so one of the things that I, th I think I've shown this before, but if not, um, you know, I want to have animations when you turn that it, the ship banks like this. And obviously it's this ship here, not this one with way too many colors, but it'll look pretty awesome. Um, and then, you know, do things like we've got, you know, the ability to make it when you fire, you get these little animations too. Uh, we'll have to see, we'll have to see how much space we have in the char ROM uh, to actually do that. I'd like to keep the animation as smooth as possible and if that if that means that you know potentially we're limiting the number of types of enemies or doing some sort of bank switching at times to um, control the the content that's available across the accessible range of um, of uh, of char data then you know that I'm fine with that. I mean, the other possibility is we do something like char RAM where we we load this content. Right now the content is uh, pretty much fixed in place in, um, in the cartridge, so to speak, in the ROM, right? But there's nothing preventing us from saying that at, um, at any given time we want to, um, you know, um, if we use char ram we we could potentially load up the um load up different images and and make that look correct um you know dynamically as we need to so i don't know there's a lot there still to be determined and um as as i work through this i'm obviously finding different potential challenges and problems with this approach and um one of the challenges that Jordan faces while he's working on the art is, um, you know, that he he obviously has some really great ideas about how this should look, but the system itself is limited in terms of the number of colors it can display, um, both completely and uh, simultaneously. Um, but you know, stay tuned for that. A lot of uh, exciting ideas we've been tossing around, and and I'm hoping um, to get more of them into the game now that we're. Wrapping up, at least on the sprite side, the way that these palettes are handled. Um, I think on the on the background part of this, it's going to be a lot easier because 
there's just a lot less involved. Um, I mean, we're going to have some pretty neat stuff going on, I think, for the backgrounds, but palette-wise, I don't expect that we're going to have too much that's going to be uh, too much that's going to be uh, shifting around. Um, so, anyway, um, I'm going to wrap up here because uh, I'm I'm done. Uh, but let's see comments here. So, bank switching for sprites would need the player sprites to have a fixed location in each bank. Yeah, no, that's that's true. Um, that's one of the benefits of using the char ram is that you could. Um, keep the player loaded in the char ram permanently and just update for the enemies um, you know what enemies are loaded and, and then the pallets used and we don't have to worry about bank switching and and the positioning of the player it's not a it's not a huge deal the player isn't that big even if we add animation one of the things we you know keep in mind is really just the two bottom tiles are changing as you animate and then you can swap the position and, and swap um, horizontally mirror the uh, tiles so that it looks like they're turned but obviously it's just using the same data um, no MDTA UK it's no problem um, part of the reason I'm doing this live is so people can ask questions and and it can be recorded and and uh, but uh, I tried to uh, just kind of plow through this and get this going. I'm pretty happy we got the conversion working mostly right. I think this, I gotta look at why the explosion didn't work right. If there's something weird that happened. Um, it's weird that it didn't understand the transparency there correctly. Kind of curious to know what. Uh, you know, it's possible that we just had too many colors um, in general. But that'll be for the next stream because I'm I'm done. So, uh, there are those white pixels. Yeah, so some of that, that's definitely true. There are some, there's some oddities there I'll have to mess with. Um, but as always, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me on Twitter at Clarivus. Um, you can post to the comments in YouTube. I post the recordings there pretty much immediately after the stream. I'm on Nintendo Age uh, on the Discord and in the forums as Zelius. And, uh, you know, uh, there are a bunch of other people doing NES programming there. So feel free to hop on board and ask some questions if you're interested. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll see you Monday and we'll keep on plugging on and have a good weekend and have a good night. Thanks for watching.